All right. So the other day a package arrived and I completely forgot about it. I kind of shoved it under the bed and um, I almost tripped over it this morning. Um, I've mentioned micro squirt, using micro squirt for the LS engine, using micro squirt for any other you know, fuel injected application. It's an inexpensive way to get your vehicle running using fuel injection in your uh, factory. Uh, if you got coil on coil on plug setup, you know, DIS setup, whatever, even it'll work in a distributor setup. I found a screaming deal for this uh, micro squirt plug and play uh, ECU and harness. I found it on eBay. The guy used it allegedly one time. It looks almost brand new. He just wanted to get his engine running and then obviously he went a different direction. This retails for, I think around 800 bucks if you get it from uh, EFI source. I think I paid 550 for it. That's not bad, considering it's 406 bucks if you buy just your micro squirt box and the uh, eight foot harness and you have to wire it yourself. Here's what you get. And like I said, this came from, I believe, let's look at the paperwork before I get into anything here. Uh, yeah, EFI source, uh, they're cool enough to give you the hardware install. Uh, you can use Tuner Studio, you can use um, uh, Mega Squirts uh, stuff, whatever they use. Uh, EFI source recommends using Tuner Studio. Just go to tunerstudio.com and you can download the free tuning software. I have it downloaded on my 20 year old, uh, it's an IBM ThinkPad. The old brick. So I use it for my MSD controller. Um, it's cut and dry. I mean, it's two pages. There's no serious paperwork. You know, they tell you how to do the hardware install. Uh, I don't know if this, the hardware install, let me see. Well, it does say for LS style engine, so yes, you're going to have to do a hardware install. They're cool enough to tell you what you need. You know, you got to disconnect and remove the battery, mount the controller to a suitable location. Um, that's a no brainer there. If you want to cut an access hole for a for the harness to go through, I would just mount it under the hood somewhere safe and dry. They tell you how to do your wiring, power ground, switch 12 volts are on the pigtail, and they are labeled. All the wires are labeled. Ground wires, it's one ground in here. It bolts directly to the cylinder head. Not to the battery, not to the firewall, not to sheet metal, to the cylinder head. Very specific. And you have to make sure your engine has a ground strap between, um, well, the engine itself and the chassis. They also give you a purple wire. Purple wire is for your fuel pump, just like in the GM. I believe it's a purple wire, purple or green, for your uh, relay and your GM harness when you modify it. And then they tell you all the information here. You know, you want to log into Tuner Studio, use your, you know, your serial communication setup, which is like stupid simple. Um, check all your sensor input, start the engine, blah, 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 blah. This one, plug and play, already has a, a base tune loaded in it. I believe that it was like the, one of the sloppy uh, mechanics, Mr. Denma's uh, turbo tunes. Basically, it's just to get your engine running. You get your engine running, you get to the dyno or wherever you need to go safely. Here's your serial ports, and I think they gave you your serial connectors. They give you two of them. It's a simple, it's an eighth inch, might even be smaller. That might even be a, let's say a 30 second almost. I don't even know the technical term. It's a stereo jack. And then it uses like a typical DIN 9 serial port. Like for a 30 year old IBM computer toaster, whatever. But looking, let's start with this bad boy and I'll show you what you get. Even if you paid the full 800 bucks for the setup, it is not unreasonable. Um, Trying to figure out how to undo the, the bulkhead connector. Well, anyways, here's your ECU. They give you all your wiring pinouts, and it says right here LS1 uh, 24X modification. This one's for a Gen 3 setup. Uh, there are guys, they, uh, EFI, EFI source themselves, do a 58X setup. But for what most of us do, well, at least what I do, Gen 3, it's a 24X. Here's your fuse block and relay bulkhead. 
You got three fuses here. I'm going to assume looks like injectors, coils, and sensors. That's why they're segregated. Your main relay. I believe this 30 amp is your main power fuse for your micro squirt. Here's your stereo female side to uh, create a connection bridge between your micro squirt unit to your computer. Here's a bunch of wires I just loomed off just to make the setup a little cleaner for so I can uh, do my wiring. Purple's your fuel pump and it says right on the wire. It's like, man, they printed it right on the wire, what, you, what you're hooking this up to. Fuel pump, this one, this green, yellow stripe is your tack output. Black, obviously we know what that goes to. That is our ground and there's a pink uh, this pink one in this little loom here is for your oxygen sensor. Your wire in here, your small, I want to say it's a 14 gauge, it's 14 gauge wire, is your 12 volt key. Older GM vehicles, so you want to hook this up to your um, distributor, 12 volt power source, your HEI, and then obviously this is your battery. This goes directly to your battery, you do not have to fuse it because you're fusing a relay right here, hook it directly up to your battery. That's it. So you guys can kind of see why I spent the extra 150 bucks. It's already done. I mean, I have all the harnesses and connectors and pigtails if I want to do another one, but, but I found the I found this as a steel, so it comes with a nice bulkhead connector. This harness is eight feet long. I'm probably gonna have some extra, but that's okay. I just have to loom it. I mean, there's only a couple more connectors couple more sensor plugs than an MSD 6014 or 6010, 6012. Just a few more just to run fuel injection. You're, you're silly not to give this a shot. I like a carburetor. Your carburetor is simple. MSD is retardedly easy to use, but for the price for basically $100 more, you get cheap fuel injection. Um, you can see here on the side of the harness. Uh, this is going to be your driver side harness. You have all your, uh, these are for your injector plugs. These are for your, if they, you have EV1 style injectors, LS1, LT1. Most um, 2000 and up Gen 3 LSV8s use the, I want to say like the Multitech Mini, the Delphi Mini connector. You can either butcher, butcher the wires here and hook up your own connectors or you can go the cleaner route, spend the $25 and get the adapter, which adapts an EV1 uh, female connector to a, a Delphi Micro or Multitech, whatever they call it. But even every one of these wires is, they tell you, I mean obviously this is for your driver side coil pack, but they are nice enough to put the description in the wiring. I'm sure they did that for when they were wiring it themselves. Also at the end of the driver side uh, harness, you have your three, you have three lines here. Let me pull them back just a little bit. This is for your, you need your coolant temperature sensor. These are throttle position, throttle position sensor, definitely mandatory. We all know this. And orange and white, uh, if I remember correctly, this should be your air intake. Air, intake air temperature sensor. Crazy, huh? And then we're gonna go to the other side show you the all-important, incredibly mandatory to the cylinder head ground. Um, you have also your other four injectors for your passenger side, harness for your coil pack passenger side, and I want to say this, I want to pull it back just a little bit to read it, your map sensor, all important, incredibly important, and then you got this one that comes here in the middle of the branch on a very long lead, pull it back a little bit, yep. The incredibly important crank sensor, obviously we all know without this, there's no point in having this because it's a waste of material, your engine's not going to run. So that's pretty much it. You don't need um, an IAC, you don't need a idle air, idle air control. It's nice to have. Most tuners, most guys that have been doing this a long time will be like, yeah, you kind of want that, but sometimes it'll idle at a certain speed when it's cold, and just like an old carbureted vehicle, sometimes it'll idle up higher when it gets up, warmed up the temperature. And they pull the extra wires out of the harness. 
which you can obviously put back in the harness if you wanted to for other miscellaneous things. Things we don't, most of us don't need. The pros of this unit, price, price point is one. It's just a, a hair more than, I shouldn't even say it's a hair more. If you want to run a carbureted setup, it's actually probably more expensive than running a micro squirt. Um, so there's a pro there. I mean, if you get a, if you get an engine with all the fixings, um, or even if you get an engine without a harness, you're not cutting a butcher in a harness. You're not buying the money. You're not spending the money on HP tuners. You're not farming your uh, tune out to somebody, you know, to unlock your vats. You don't have to worry about that. I mean, you can get it running. Uh, Tuner Studio has a lot of, you know, dedicated, detailed um, information, a lot of write-ups. There's tons of forms and stuff to get you going. So price is the big one. Price is very big. You know, compared to carburetor setup, this is very attractive. All you need is a high-pressure fuel pump, but if you're going to run an LS motor anyways, you're going to need a electric fuel pump. The cons, if you're running a 4L60 or 4L80, um, this, this, this setup here by itself will not work. You have to buy another setup that they sell. At that point, um, financially, you might as well just use the factory GM stuff. I get that. Uh, it's batch fire, it, meaning it fires four injectors at once. Some people don't like that. They're like, well, why is the injector spraying like uh, this cylinder when the valve is closed or this cylinder when it's on its power stroke, blah, blah, blah. Whether or not that takes place, I don't know. Um, the fuel economy difference, from what I understand from everyone who I've talked to, everyone has had with great luck with this, it's very minimal. It's better. You're still getting better fuel economy than a carburetor, typically, hypothetically. There's some people that, like me for one, I was running a quadrajet on my 5.3 and it got excellent fuel economy. Um, but it's batch, it's batch fire on the injectors, it's also waste spark. You know, it, it fires uh, two coils at once, one on the power stroke and one on the exhaust stroke. A lot of factory uh, configurations use that, there's no issue. But ultimately, it's the price for, I've seen guys run turbo setups with this, uh, like I keep bringing him up, Matt, Sloppy Mechanics, he, I learned a lot of information from him, that guy is a genius. When it comes to running budget EFI, it's like, why even run a, why even run a carburetor? It's silly. I've had good luck with them. Like I, I've been saying, there's nothing wrong with the carburetor setup on the S10. Uh, I'm probably just going to leave the S10 alone, unless I another one of these fall, basically falls into my lap. And uh, so that's pretty much where I'm at. The only, like I said, the only hiccup that I can see right now that's causing a very small minor issue is I gotta get different pigtails for the injectors. Because this is the EV1 style. Um, I could get new injectors, they're cheap enough, but I don't know, we'll see. I mean, I see them going on eBay, like refurbished ones, a set of eight going for 50 bucks. So do I wanna get you know, extenders on these factory injectors or do I just say to hell with it, get the correct injector for the setup? We'll see, it's not my money. This is going in my brother's car, that's up to him. But that's all I have. I got a micro squirt like I said I was gonna get. I got it for a steal. Even if you pay full price through uh, EFI Studio, which I believe he charges like $7.95, it is totally worth it. A couple bucks more, you can get the Phytech kit. I think it's just under a grand or maybe just a bit more than that and it's self-learning. Um, maybe in the future I will attack that. I might go with that and maybe throw it on the S10. Maybe throw it on the station wagon. Who knows? But for now, we're going to give this a shot. And hopefully within not too far off in the future, we have to get... We've got to get, uh, we have to get some valve springs for this motor. Uh, we're going to get some pac 1218s. Maybe I'll get them from Elgin or Elgin or whatever. I believe that's who makes them. Uh, new springs and then see what happens. Maybe I'll start it on the stand to see if I can get it running. See if I can... Uh, do a little data logging. I'm still learning, but from what I'm gathering, Tuner Studio is a pretty easy concept. It's pretty popular, but not that many people, not too many people use it mainstream because HP tuners kind of took away their thunder, so to speak. I mean, I only learned about Micro Squirt not too long ago because I saw a guy who was having great luck with it on his junkyard 48 that he had in an old Chevy. And it's a fraction of the cost. 
compared to, you know, traditional fuel injection or even one of the better micro score units. So, alrighty, that's enough ranting and babbling. I thought I would give you guys an update as to what I got and pros and cons. The general overview, and hopefully within the near future, I will have a running and possibly driving example. And let's see if it's any good. Or I might just get pissed off and throw another fucking carburetor on this, on one of these engines. Alright guys, toodles.